everyone. I am James Milan. Welcome to this episode of Talk of the Town. Um, I am very pleased to be joined today by an Arlington resident um, who has been up to something that you may not know about, but you should. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, Bethany Eisenberg is joining me. She is the president and founder of the Guatemalan Aid Fund, um, which is a nonprofit operating right out of Arlington, a house here in Arlington, with a huge impact already um, that we want to kind of uh, dig deep into here. So Bethany, first of all, really appreciate your being here. Oh, I'm so, so grateful to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, no, we, it took us a little while to put this yeah. together, right? Because of complications in our life, but also because I know you're just very, very busy and you're about to go back to Guatemala again, I think. Yes, very next soon. week. Yep. Yeah, very soon. So next week. So thanks. I'm so glad we found a little pocket of time to be able to talk. So I just, I mentioned already you're, you, you, kind of founded the Guatemalan Aid Fund, and I know it's that's over 20 years ago now, yes. but I would like to ask you to start by just kind of telling us how did this come about? I mean, I, I just am going to assume that you weren't born in Guatemala, so right. you came to be aware of things sometime since then. So just tell us, um, you know, in, take however long you'd like just to let us know how this has come okay, about. Okay, well, well, thanks. So um, I always wanted uh, to go to Latin America, and our, our children were born in Latin America. And when I went down there, it was over 20 years ago, I had never been there. And I had never uh, really seen a culture that experienced such poverty. And I was really quite stunned by it. And it's a beautiful country. It's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, uh, the everything, fresh air, sunshine, mountains, volcanoes, beautiful waterways, and the people are just colorful and beautiful, but the poverty is incredible. There, it's the fourth poorest country in the world. Mm. Um, there's malnutrition of more than 50% of the indigenous children, and most um, indigenous children, uh, or many, don't have access to clean water, school, it's very difficult to find jobs. Um, and I saw a glimpse of that when I was down there the first time 20 years ago, but it was enough that I came back and I just looked at my house <laughs> and mm -hmm. I looked at, you know, and I thought to myself, my bathroom has more things in it, is larger and cleaner than many of these people's homes. And I just had to do something. And so that year um, I stopped giving, uh, we used to have a big, huge Christmas party, you know, lots of gifts that people didn't need, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, kind of typical, right? And I just stopped. I said, everybody, you okay this year that we don't uh, exchange gifts? And everyone was thrilled, <laughs> of course. And I said, and could you bring like maybe some infant Tylenol or something to the party? Or, And they were thrilled. And we had this pile of donations under the tree and nobody left with a gift that they didn't want. Or, we, um, And that started the Guatemala Aid Fund. And people were so enthusiastic. And then in order to do more. Every time I went to Guatemala and, um, you know, I just wanted to do more because there's such a need. So I started a 501c3 and I was lucky because this is kind of funny. When I started it, I, I didn't know really anything and I did it myself. And the woman at the IRS said, Bethany, um, when you open a nonprofit, you can't be the president and the secretary and all of the board <laughs> members. You have to have other people. And she was so lovely. Um, she literally walked me through the entire process. So I became a 501c3. I got board members. And um, five of our six board members are Arlington residents. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. and we've had different people over the 20 years. And I'm just so grateful to all of them because everybody uh, contribute something from their perspective, their skills. And we just, you know, want people to enjoy being part of the Guatemala Aid Fund, that it gives back to them, mm -hmm. you know, that it's not a burden being on the board. And so, yeah, that's how we started. And, and uh, you know, over 20 years later, you know, here we are and we've uh, progressed and we have a, a, a great, great, great Guatemalan communities that we're, we're, we're frankly honored to be able to help them in the little way that we can. It's it's just an honor that we can, uh, you know, do something and, you know, be productive and, and helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the way in which you are being helpful, I think, uh, you know, uh, kind of demands to be 
uh, amplified as a message, I think, for folks. Personally, uh, I really I love the... I was telling you before we went on air that the tone of your website is very, very clear. Right from, the, you know, as soon as you look at it. And that's what you want on a website. I know you were talking before, it's kind of messy or whatever. Yeah, it's a work I do in it progress. myself. I yeah. don't have a professional web developer, so it's got all my thoughts thrown in there. <laughs> so fair enough. But I think, as far as I understand, really one of the points of any good website is, can somebody look at it for five seconds and feel like they have a sense of what that organization, what that cause, what that thing is about. And uh, that was my that was my experience in looking over the website, um, bef uh, you know, just earlier. And what I love about it is that idea that you are there to accompany people. You are there to empower people. Mm. You are not there to uh, spread charitable works, to lead somebody by the hand or nose. Um, so talk to us about that ethos of the Guatemala. Ethos. Yeah, yeah. So again, we're just honored to be welcomed, you know, into to their community. And, you know, we ask, you know, what are the needs? And, and the people that we've partnered with, it's just unbelievable to be in their presence. They're just so inspiring. It's people... They're Guatemalans, and they could be wealthy Guatemalans, and they've chosen to give back to people in need. And and when you talk to them, they say, it's just something we have to do. And uh, so what we do is we partner with them, and I consider us to just be a connector. It's not, and I'm very clear to say, it's not our project. We're not building that you know, community center. We're helping them build their community center because we have people who want to help here and I can connect them and they feel comfortable because I go there and I know them and I know the people and because these projects get done. And so what, what they are working at, the people that we work with, they are trying to eliminate the root causes of poverty that result in child abandonment, child abuse, deadly and dangerous migration mm -hmm. because migration's not the answer, you know? And when you talk to many of these Guatemalans, I mean, who wants to leave their family? Mm -hmm. Who wants to leave their, their home? But when you don't have clean water, you can't get to school, so then you can't get a job and you can't get out of it and you can't feed your family, it's desperation. Um, but with just a little bit of help, you know, to help them be able to attend school, to help get clean water, to help um, with psychological and parenting skills and things like that. So that's how we partner with them. And, and again, it's not our projects. But yes, we, you know, we're involved in the planning and the implementation mm -hmm. but and the fundraising and the connecting. And, you know, my background's in environmental, you know, and engineering water specifically, um, water resources. So I, I help with that as well. But it's really... Uh, it's amazing what what they do, and um, if I can, I talk about the parenting school. Oh, of course. So the parenting school, we work with uh, Fatima's Children Home, which is not an orphanage. It's it's a home for children for as long as they need it, and the circumstances by which they come to that home are are devastating. But when you walk in the home, you it's just. There's music and kids laughing and playing and they're clean and they're coming out in their jammies and there's 45 kids in a tiny little cape house, but it seems fantastic. But their goal is not to have the kids stay in care. Mm -hmm. It's to have them reunited with either family members, maybe aunt, uncle, grandparent, or their biological parents if it's safe, or to find a forever home for them. But what they were finding was, you know, the courts would say, okay, these kids now have, you've given them psychological care, dental care, they've been leveled out in school, you know, just send you them back. You got them back on their feet, so to speak, and now send them send right them back. Exactly, but to where they came from, and there's no change. And they said, we want to break that cycle of why they came here in the first place. So they brilliantly started this parenting school that... Uh, the parents have to be committed. They have to come or they will not receive their children back or wherever the children will be placed. And they have family counseling, parent counseling. The, the caregivers have to have a job. It doesn't matter what it is or how much it pays, but they have to have a job. The children have to be consistently in school and they learn how to be 
good parents and also how to be good to themselves and to build strength in the family bond. And this completely changes patterns of abuse. And the parents are proud and they go back and tell other people in their communities. But the thing about it, the reason it really works is it's not a handout. They, when they come, they have to pay a little bit to come because they need to be invested in it. And then they have to consistently come and the children have to be in school, but they will get supplies, food supplies, clothing, medical assistance for everyone in their family. But they won't get that if they're not attending the classes, their kids aren't in school and there isn't progression. So they really are changing the cycle. So it's quite different from someone lines up and you give the whole family Absolutely. some food I'll and they you, go away. Quid pro quo has gotten a bad name for obvious reasons and over the last couple of years. Uh, but that's, that is the value of that, that, that there is an exchange here, that you have, you have responsibility and commitment on your side and you have to stay, you have to stick with that. That's not a one-time thing. That's a, every week thing. That's right. And, and that's what and, it is. And, and then in turn, you're saying, and we're going to help you. you. You're going to be in a better place if you do all those that's things. That's right. Mentally, physically, everything. Right. And it's really quite an honor to see the commitment of the parents and their appreciation when they've gone through it and, um, and to see them rise up. And that's the whole, the whole purpose. So we had some, we just had uh, great people. We had, you know, you know, just join in and to see the, the, the center was built with recycled materials and it trained, the workers were trained um, in construction. So we're creating jobs, they're getting experience and things. So the whole program, it's so much better than just giving money. It's employing the community, helping them rise up and creating opportunity with dignity in their own country. Yeah. Well, I got to say, I mean, can anybody tell if I'm a fan or not? Uh, <laughs> obviously I am, but it's, it's cause you, you, you described the birth of the idea of the parent school as a piece of genius. I would describe this as a piece of genius. And here's why what you're doing is you're taking a, a community of privileged people, which is us, Mm -hmm. And you are asking them for things that they can afford mm -hmm. and that, and you don't want them to feel bad about it. You want them no. to feel good about it. So it's all good on this end. So boom, in it goes. And then what comes out on the other side is you helping, you saying, you guys know what, what the problems are. You That's know right. what the solutions are. You're going to, you're going to be able to do that if we can also help. Exactly. Come on now. You um, know, there, there's... We're just, Guatemala Aid Fund is a connector. That's what I tell people. When people say, oh, you're doing so much. I said, the Guatemalans are doing everything and they're committed to their neighbors. It's neighbor helping neighbor. And it's really amazing when you see someone there that by our standards has nothing. By our standards, like oh, yeah. less than nothing. And they turn around and give to their neighbor with less than less than nothing. And it's quite inspiring. And... The community center was a, a dream for a long time because Fatima's children's home and they are child protection lawyers and um, mm -hmm. they run this protective home. They kept seeing these kids coming from this indigenous area. It's called Solala. It's absolutely stunningly beautiful where Lake Atitlan is called the most beautiful lake in the world. And it's surrounded by volcanoes and that's created the lake and it's stunning. Wow. Uh, yeah, I hope that all of you can come and, and visit. It's gorgeous. But they knew that the kids were coming from this area and they couldn't get the parents into the parenting school. It's very difficult to get into the city from this rural area. Mm -hmm. And they said, we just want to build a similar type of center out there. And that was their vision and their dream. And we're like, we're with you and we're going to help you. And we, we had a beautiful fundraiser um, and doTERRA oils actually helped us with the foundation uh, fundraising. And it was just so exciting because we went up to there to the side of the mountain, to the forest and met with the, the local people there. And um, one of the local landowners said, there's ancient, you know, ceremonial 
currently being used, indigenous ceremonial sites, and I don't want them to be destroyed, and I don't want this land to be destroyed, and want to partner with you to save this land and protect this land and build this community center on part of it. And so it was all done through COVID. The last time I was there was 2019. When they were doing the foundation, it was thrilling for me. And, uh, you know, the, the same thing there is they uh, employed local Guatemalans to do the construction, you know, and it's wonderful to come and, and want to help in other countries. It really is, but it's so empowerful, empowering and impactful when they're doing the work, they're being paid, they're getting experience. So the, the manager of the site was a Guatemalan and he lived in Canada for years and he learned really good construction skills and wanted to give back. He moved back to Guatemala, worked on this project and taught these high level construction skills to the local people and they're now very valued workers. They got paid, they were invested because it's their own community. They're working to uplift their own community and get skills. It's just incredible to see that. And, you know, a, a little side story is they said, well, we can just build the thing right on a slab and, and we'll build it real cheaply. And I said, you know what? I said, from engineering <laughs> exactly. here, uh, I said, the there's mudslides and there's, you know, it's on the side of a mountain and there's the rainy season. And I said, we really want this to stay. I said, I will help you raise the money. And it was a very expensive foundation mm -hmm. for, for Guatemala standards. Mm -hmm. It was $30,000 with rebar and concrete yeah. and dug footings and everything. I said, but uh, I would like to r help you raise the money for your thing that's going to stay there forever and not get blown away. And you can build a second story on it if that's necessary. So at any rate, they've been doing this. And the community center, the thing about it is it's their community center. And their local people are the ones that are working there. And they are all invested in having it happen and it's creating jobs and there's a malnutrition prevention program there. There is a library. There is after school uh, dropout prevention program and school support um, and a medical clinic right. and all of this. And what we're working on next year is to put in a uh, clean water well, a clean source of water for this indigenous community. But that when you see these kids that are so excited to have the opportunity mm -hmm, of course, yeah. to learn and people who are working in their community. And, you know, I just want to say again that we're a very small part of this. It's, you know, and we're honored. I'm absolutely grateful. And, and the people that work with us are because are, they see and, and like you were saying, you don't have to do a lot. You don't have to right, and, give a lot, just... And again, a little bit of genius here because it, the scale of this means that somebody on our end... Hey, Arlington is a giving and generous community full of good people. Certainly we is. all know we have more than we need, and so many of us wish to give. And what's the easiest way to give? We give money. And But... We give money in the hopes and in the faith that something good will happen. But we don't know most of the time. But folks who give money to you... They know. They know. We, we, we yeah, we live stream, you know. That, you know and that, and that, that, that is in, invaluable, right? Goes it's there, really yeah. invaluable for the way that somebody like me uh, would feel that, okay, I, you know, I know I could do more, but I'm doing this. And look, I feel good, right? And, and that's that's the message we try to give to people is, first of all, we are 100 percent volunteer. And so we say whatever you give to us is going. And not only is it going, it's incredibly impactful. You literally, literally are absolutely changing the lives of uh, Guatemalans. They want to go to school. They want to work and they want to stay in Guatemala. I mean, who wouldn't, if you saw how beautiful it is and everything, and, and the culture is stunning. And so we're just honored to help them realize their dreams in, in their own country and not have to, you know, desperate and deadly migration is just, it's just brutal. Yeah.
I may, I may not have counted accurately, but I know that it is at least five times now that you have said the word honored, that you have described yes, yourself I as am. honored. And I, I, I believe you, and I just want to say that it, it, it speaks to the, the kind of humility with which you are approaching this mission, because it's been a mission, clearly. And it's uh, moving to hear you speak about it that way. I believe you, you know. I'm lucky. Um, and I'm really, I'm really, so be it. Who, you know, I say that to people all the time. I say, who has the opportunity, you know, especially in this time right now, mm -hmm. when there's so many unsettling things happening everywhere, everywhere around the globe. And then you have this opportunity to help wonderful people doing excellent things for their neighbors. Right. And to be cool. part of something good. It's just, that's just good. That right? is just, I'm, yeah. I'm the lucky one here. I'm blessed to be able to be a part of that. And, and also, you know, being able to go there, I'm going there next week. And as I was telling you, I'll be going up, um, onto the side of the mountain into an indigenous community and they're so welcoming and um, I'm just grateful. I'm just yeah. grateful that I can do that. Well, let's, uh, I was gonna say let's help you do that but I don't really mean that because that would go counter to, to your whole message. So that, that humility of yours that I was, you know, you're being honored in that way, I think uh, makes you maybe a little ambivalent or ambiguous about talking about how do you raise money and how could people help. But I think we should do a little of that, yeah. you know, as part of the message here. Yeah. So I, how can people help and what are the different ways in which you are raising the money that is going to these excellent acts? Well, thank you for asking. And, and we did talk earlier that, you know, I do consider a big part of, if you want to call it our mission or whatever, is we do that teen to teen event where it's not for raising money. And, and we really want to send a message to anybody that you can always do something and don't ever think that it's little because any tiny thing that you do is, is helpful. But we do have some things and we have some exciting things. Um, right, but you just mentioned the teen to teen event. So yeah. we, should, we should very quickly let people yeah. know what that is. And then, yeah, so let's, we haven't let's done show it. people a couple we, of things. We haven't that. done the teen to teen event, uh, of course, since COVID, but we get teens together. And the purpose, I started that years ago because Kids don't know that other kids can't go to school in other countries because they don't have money for the uniform and they can't get a bus or they can't get there. And they don't know that entire families, six people live in a shack with a dirt floor. And that's not, you know, why, why should they? They haven't been exposed to that. And we're not trying to expose them to that, but we're trying to get teens together to, to talk about community service um, it can be anything. It doesn't have to be in another country building wells. It can be right here. Like, do you love dogs? Then you can collect dog food and give it to your local shelter. Do you love the park near your house and it needs to be cleaned up? You can go clean it up. So the teen to teen thing is a party that we put together uh, and have teens that do service talk to other teens that do service and to inspire them. Why do you do it? Because you care about something. And it's not as meaningful if it's not a cause that you don't care about. And so we try to inspire them for what they do care about, mm -hmm, you know, and mm -hmm. you, you can pick, there's a myriad of things. Right. You could volunteer at ACMI. Absolutely. There's, there's, and you hear we, that, folks? Well, yeah, yeah. It, and it should be something that gives back to you. And mm -hmm. that's what we find is that, you know, you do it because, you know, it, it's something you care about and that makes it so meaningful. And, um, it doesn't have to be Guatemala aid fund. And so that's something that, that, you know, we just try to inspire people, whoever it is, you mm -hmm. know, adults or children, just to find something that's meaningful to you and, and give back. But um, we do, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I just want, I, I, I do want to. All right, I'll show. You know, kicking and screaming, you're gonna come no, and no, you're gonna I tell do. us. We, we, our project this year, which we need to raise a, a very large amount of money for, um, is a clean water well for the village of uh, Las Minas, uh, neighborhood area of uh, San Jose Chacaya, mm -hmm. um, which is very interesting because that means Chacaya means where there's a lot of water in the local 
uh, Kachikel language, but uh, they don't have access to clean water. It's there, so we want to have a uh, water filling station. We want to b drill a well, uh, solar powered pumps, um, a very uh, simple but excellent chlorination system. So we'll be raising money for that. And also uh, this land that I was talking to you about uh, is a long-term plan. And if there's something that I could say that people want to donate to have an impact on the world is this is native forested, threatened land that has three indigenous ceremonial sites on it. We would like to uh, raise money to purchase it and put it in protective care of the indigenous people forever there. And what I consider that would be a great gift that to is, the world. Yeah. And so that's a that big project for forever. us. So this, this book, the money will go towards that. So this is a book that is headed here right now. Um, this is a labor of love uh, that I've worked on with our illustrator, Don Prindle in um, Maine and my sister, Martha Eisenberg on the board. She's also here in Arlington. And um, this book, we call it a book with a purpose or four. Um, mm -hmm. And it gives back. So 100% of the profits from this book called Singing Beach Day, and it's Singing Beach in Manchester, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. is about the book. and. This book will, um, uh, all the profits, not the profits, all the sales, not just the profits, will go directly to the programs that you and I have been talking about, but mostly that land preservation and the water well mm -hmm. and the community center. And this book, the purposes are, um, you can see that the people in this cover are all different colors. Each mm -hmm. one of them is a different color. And it's to showcase uh, diverse families and that you may, these, this family may have been formed by many different situations and mm -hmm. we want the reader to make up whatever they think that is. But in the story, the children are trying to talk their mom into taking the day off of work and taking them to the beach, uh, to Singing Beach. And um, they successfully do that. So the, another message is to take time off and how precious it is to spend time with family. And then some of the things that the children do and kind of, you know, say to the mom on how it's important to take the time off and how precious this time is. Um, it's the third purpose is how much we learn from our children. Mm. And I have to say that I have learned so much from our children. I, I can't even begin to list all of the things that I would never be exposed to if it wasn't for them. And they've just made me a better person. And I think it comes through in, in this book. And then the fourth thing is that I already mentioned that all of the sales will go to these uh, programs. And our artist uh, is amazing. She's just incredible. And she put in she just brought it to life. She brought this book to life. You can see the motion mm -hmm. and the movement. And she- uh, And joy. 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 Joy, love. And she put all these little details in it. And, and one of them is, um, so this is a Guatemalan weaving. This weaving is called, is a backstrap mm. weaving. And the, it's called a backstrap because the weavers, the women, they put a strap around their back and around a tree and they have sticks and they pull it down and you can see it's the width of oh, the sticks. Uh -huh. And this is incredibly detailed. Uh, this, is a, this is a very typical uh, Guatemalan weaving and you can see the other side, the, the threads mm -hmm. on it. But the colors, everything in Guatemala is colorful and this would take months to make. So we also have these for sale and, and we, we, we uh, again, all of the money goes back to Guatemala all of it. Everything that goes to Guatemala Aid Fund goes back to the people who make the items and are running these programs. So we do have an Etsy site for that. And then just some of the things that we have, I just, I'll show you if you're looking for little <laughs> ornaments. This is the Quetzal bird. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'll put it here right in front <laughs> of me. So the Quetzal bird is the national bird of Guatemala. It's also the money, the Quetzal. The Quetzal. And yeah. the reason the Quetzale is, is the actual dollar bills and money now is in the ancient times, um, the feathers of the Quetzal bird were used as money. And so the Quetzales, and so the, we have many different things. I just brought a couple of these because they're kind of cute for, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but we have many things on that Etsy site, you know, um, uh, uh, 
pocketbooks and and uh, jewelry and mm -hmm. and everything. And we also have uh, things that are made by indigenous. It's indigenous crafts, and then we have people that donate items. And again, 100% of that money goes to the programs. And uh, so we're very excited. We're very excited about this book, and mm -hmm. uh, I hope we get to read this in Arlington libraries. Yeah, that comes. would be great. I that would, would be great. I hope we, can, so. we can we can help get make that happen. A library event, I think so. Um, so basically, what I hear is that there are there's ways to get stuff. If yes. You, if you so choose. Yes. Um, in terms of giving, or you can just give, but one way or the other whatever you're getting is reinforcing the message and then the money itself as you have clearly uh, uh, expressed is going straight to straight there directly uh, yes the people and communities that we so or you so much want to support and now right. we do as well i hope um bethany it's been it's been a very nice chat thank you so much um, it really has and and inspiring i have to say um, definitely. And I um, am looking forward to just kind of staying in touch with you and seeing how things go, seeing how things go with the well and the land and on from there. Um, but I want to thank you for, again, your time here today, but also for this work that you're doing, which I know you are honored to do. But boy, it's nice to talk about some positive things going on in the world now. And, uh, and those people are, uh, who are getting the most benefit we hope from all of this right now are so deserving. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I'm just, thank you so much for, you know, you can tell I'm super passionate about it and thank you for having me here. I was thrilled to come. And I do want to say kind of the message I hope is that, you know, we all can, can do something, you know, that's what I've learned is um, we all can do something and it doesn't have to be huge, but you know, when you see uh, other people helping others, and that's where I get so much inspiration. And then you see these kids that come in in desperate situations that you can't, I wouldn't even tell you. Um, mm -hmm. And then you come back and you hear of these kids and you see them and you're like, I... That's possible. It's, <laughs> yeah, that's possible. Yeah. And it, it, it really is. And... I just want to, you know, thank everybody for listening and, and thank you so much for inviting me here. Absolutely. Well, as you said, everybody can do something and it doesn't have to be huge. That's right. But it can be huge. I'll just leave it at that. She is Bethany Eisenberg. It is the Guatemala Aid Fund. Um, we will make sure that you can see on your screen um, how to make contact and make donations if you wish. Um, and um, we very much hope that uh, to, to keep up with Bethany, as I was saying. So we'll keep everybody uh, attuned to the situation. This has been Talk of the Town. Um, I am James Milan. Really appreciate Bethany's time. Really appreciate yours as well. We'll see you next time.